We have individuals um, representing our current Leadership Academy, as well as faculty members presenting today. And we're on a new platform. We're using Zoom instead of our traditional platform. And so bear with us, there could be glitches. Technology usually results in some form of glitches, but we're hoping not, and we're hoping that you really do um, enjoy our conversation today. It, it's interesting to imagine <clears throat> um, the history of the Leadership Academy, and I'm trying to push a slide and it's not working, so that's kind of interesting. Um, there we go. The Leadership Academy came out of a lot of conversations actually with our board of directors. And our board of directors believed that we needed to be building a pool of uh, leaders who actually understood the way in which FedCap at that time thought. We talked about it as the DNA of FedCap, and we wanted to have leaders that really represented this DNA. And, um, and so we came together as a group of individuals from across the organization and spent lots and lots of hours developing content. And the goal was really to dissect what does leadership mean in the FedCap family and then how do we translate that dissection into content? How do we tr translate that content into modules and into um, very specific assignments? And Margaret will talk about that a little bit more. But it was a really iterative and I think very generative process where many, many leaders from throughout the organization contributed to this content. And it's been pretty exciting because it's never stopped evolving and it's never stopped becoming, I think, tighter and smarter and, and more, more important to the future of the organization. I mentioned the fact that we have um, faculty members from throughout the organization. I, I wanna um, zero in on that for a moment. These are leaders of different companies and programs who commit a tremendous amount of time and energy in their already very, very busy schedules to help groom and nurture a new set of leaders. And most of the faculty members have been with us for at least two years, some for three and some for four. And it's been, it's been very exciting to watch even the faculty members evolve. And Craig will talk more about that. Um, one of the things that we institutionalized within the Leadership Academy two years ago was the concept of a faculty member assigned to a mentor. And I think that's been a very important part of the evolution of the way in which the leadership. I'm sorry, you're cutting in and out. Thank you. I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, the way the Leadership Academy um, is able to um, really build and inspire the, um, the work of the class members. In addition to our esteemed faculty members, we have guest speakers who include board members and business representatives, um, and they've been pretty impressive. We have an individual who is going to be presenting from Hub International in September. We have had an individual um, named Doug Rausch who presented several years in a row, and he is currently the executive director and president of the board of, of Daily Table. Prior to that, he was actually one of the launch individuals who launched Trader Joe's. We have had, um, uh, as I said, board members who really come to us with their strengths and their ways of thinking about the work. And in fact, Paul Davis from Community Work Services will be um, presenting in a week. So I think the thing that you need to hear about the background is that this is an organizational investment. So how does it work? Sometime in um, mid-November, um, a, a letter is um, developed by Christine McMahon, our president and CEO, that goes to every um, director or a senior director or vice president, senior vice president, as well as every manager and every supervisor uh, across the organization. Now, sometimes we get the lists get a little bit confusing because people have many, many different titles in the organization. 
But what we're looking for is um, mid-level supervisors and managers who want to evolve their skills. And those individuals complete a fairly comprehensive application, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. And that application is then reviewed by the faculty in a very arduous, rigorous process. And we'll talk about um, that more when, because several people have asked, how do you get, how, how do you know um, who to select? And, and we'll let you know a little bit more about that. And then we choose um, usually between 15 and 20 individuals that we invite to become a part of the academy. Marie will talk a little bit more about the numbers, but suffice it to say, this is a highly competitive process. The thing that I want you to, to maybe walk away from this first section is that in this highly competitive process, um, we are looking for individuals who are committed to the organization, and we're also looking for individuals who will be committed to the Leadership Academy. And so Marie, with that, why don't I change um, transferred to you and you can um, really drill down into the kind of candidates we're looking for. Sure. Thank you so much, Lori. Um, again, my name is Marie Sabatino. I'm the Director of Strategic Projects for the FedCap Group. And not only was I a student in the first year of the Leadership Academy, but as Lori alluded to earlier, um, I'm also a faculty member for the last three years. So we have quite a few veterans who have been with the program for quite a while. Um, so some of the qualities that we look for in candidates are that they're self-starters and are not afraid to take initiative, that they are teachable and ask questions and show a willingness to learn and certainly to accept feedback. There's a lot of opportunities for that throughout the course of the year, both through discussion board assignments, through our weekly phone calls, as well as in-person group presentations. So feedback and ability to learn is a big part of that. Um, we look for people who are believers in communication, and by that, of course, we mean a two-way street, uh, not just sharing, but also, you know, in terms of responsiveness, in terms of listening, you know, all the facets of communication. Uh, we hope that people will have an optimistic attitude. Sometimes we use the term a can-do spirit, and that's very important to us. Uh, people who are self-aware and are also able to develop insights based on a lot of self-reflection and self-awareness, um, who show a sense of open-mindedness and, you know, are willing to sort of, you know, acknowledge that there's things that you don't know and uh, our hope is that you can, you know, ask the right questions in order to find answers and generate some solutions. Um, one of the most important things, I think, is to show a sense of heart and purpose of the work. You know, there's a lot of meaning involved in what we do and what our mission stands for, and it's something that we really look for in terms of not just what people say, but what they embody in their work. Um, certainly, a desire to grow within the agency and to have a sense of loyalty and representing our organization and our programs and all of our stakeholders in a positive and honorable manner. Um, and lastly, having a strong sense of, of accountability, you know, not just to the larger agency and all of our companies, but to one another, your colleagues, your participants, all of your stakeholders. Um, so that's something that's very important to us. One of the questions that has come up in preparation for the Leadership Academy and this presentation is how can one maximize the chances of acceptance? So in addition to conveying all of these qualities in your application, we strongly encourage people to give sufficient time to complete the application so that there's really a strong sense of quality and you know, lack of errors and you know, lack of typos, so that we know you, know you took the time not only to be responsive to each of the questions, but to really show us a quality response. And ideally, you know, the supervisors who are recommending 
candidates are also expected to weigh in on those applications to the candidates and really share thoughts about whether it's up to speed for, for this caliber of an academy. So there's lots that you can do to really make sure that you, you, you show an excellent application um, when you submit, if you submit. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Craig, who's going to share a little bit about what people can learn as a result of the participation. Thank you, Marie. And uh, it's been my pleasure to be on the faculty of the Leadership Academy from the very beginning. Um, and as Laurie mentioned, it was a, it was a wonderful process. Um, in developing the Leadership Academy. First, as Marie just mentioned, the type of candidates that we would be looking for, um, and then exactly what it is that we would be teaching and what types of skills that we would be uh, attempting to develop with each of our candidates. So we spent a lot of time brainstorming exactly what skills we felt every single good leader uh, needed to have. And hopefully build the uh, Leadership Academy around teaching those skills. So we thought that every good leader needed to know how to think critically. Um, and that's much easier said than done. Um, and it's not just asking the right questions, but in developing as a leader, uh, it's a new way of processing information. It allows all of us to look at issues such as risk, issues such as growth. Um, and we continue to emphasize um, how to teach people to communicate effectively because at the heart and soul of all of these skills is what do you do with those skills. So either it's individually and informally using your communication skills um, or in a formal presentation and we practice those skills over and over and over. We know that we all need to be able to develop innovative new programs. And what does this mean? It means that we need to get out of our comfort zone. It means that we need to know how to stretch. It needs, it needs how to use our past experiences, but also understand that we all have biases. And some of those biases are excellent and good. And some, maybe not so much, and we need to know how to use those uh, biases to our advantage. In developing these programs, we need to be able to understand what building structure means. And I can tell you from experience, this was one of the things that I learned the most in being on the faculty, because it's not just understanding a process, it's building a structure. And we have to make good decisions and be able to look at the landscape based upon metrics, metrics that matter, that metrics that go beyond process and really look at outcomes, but more importantly, look at the real impact that a program can make and that all of us as part of the FedCap can make. And we need to fully understand what the current and future risk of all of our programming uh, may be. This is probably the most critical aspect um, of a skill that needs to be developed. So these are all the skills that we hope that we are teaching throughout the Leadership Academy um, and at the end, I'll talk about how that all really comes together. So at this point, I'd like to pass it along to Margaret, who will actually get into details about the content. Thank you, Craig. Hi, everyone. Welcome, welcome. We are thrilled indeed to be talking about the Leadership Academy. And um, my name is Margaret Cleveland, and I have the great privilege of facilitating this wonderful process. And um, so just be, what we're going to do is, is really talk about each of our different modules and how they work. And echoing what Laurie said earlier, it is a year long process. And so each of these modules that you see on the screen um, are, are four weeks long. And so we really do dig in deeply to what we're doing. And um, as again, as, as both Marie and, and Laurie mentioned, our, our curriculum is made up of um, of, of homework, which includes readings, which includes watching various kinds of videos, um, preparing for guest speakers and really getting to know a little bit about their background and how they got to be where they are. Um, we have a discussion board and that's where all of the homework happens and where discussion happens and where the mentors and the faculty are able to respond. 
um, to each of the assignments. And um, we also do quite a bit of group work and individual work, obviously, around presentations. And one of the great outcomes, and we hear this a lot from folks, is that this Academy brings together people from all across the organization, and it's an opportunity for people to get to know all of the different companies that are part of the FedCap group, to get to know the individuals, and to get to know a lot more about um, how the FedCap group works. And so it's a, it's a great opportunity for networking and connecting. And um, again, it's, it's quite robust. And but what I gather from every participant I've ever spoken to is that it has changed their lives and really increased people's ability to read, to understand, to innovate, and do all of the things that are here in our in our modules, in our breakdown here. So right now, I'm really pleased to say that um, our current participants are going to talk about each of the modules, and our undergirding really foundational piece is around critical thinking, and Laurie, being the mother of invention, um, who really got this kicked off is going to talk about critical thinking and then we'll introduce other members of the class for the other modules. So take it away. Thanks so much, Margaret. So um, many of you, if you have been around the FedCap family for any length of time, have heard the language critical thinking. And I don't want to give you a definition of it, but I want you to understand that those individuals who critically think are probably the people that ask you the most questions. They're the individuals that in a room full of people, they are trying to learn more and ask what else and what else and what else. They're individuals who are fundamentally believing that the answer comes from making certain that you ask the right questions. Critical thinking also implies that you come to a situation um, understanding that there is a need for an analytical framework, a way in which you organize information. So in the Leadership Academy, we spend time helping people, um, every single class member, develop their framework. It doesn't have to be the same for anyone, but how do you take tons of information, distill it, organize it, and, and then draw conclusions from it? And we have lots of scenarios, we have lots of reading, we have videos, but what we're really asking people to do is to come away with a crystal clear way in which they um, structure, organize, refine, and then utilize information. And with that, I am going to turn it over to Casey. Thank you, Lori. And uh, good afternoon, everybody. My name is Casey Lutz. I'm with the FedCap group. Over the last Leadership Academy has really opened my eyes and encouraged me in different ways of thinking, uh, speaking, and being in a professional atmosphere. Uh, each new lesson or module uh, builds on the last, and the flow of the Academy is really built around practicing those lessons through exercises, conversations, um, that really allow us to see that what we're learning can be applied in many different situations. So the influential communication module was my favorite. In this module, we explore the idea that the delivery of the message is just as important as the message itself. Um, we looked at and spoke about historic leaders and how the way they communicated and the core communication skills they possess made what they had to say that much more impactful. We explored factors to consider when delivering difficult messages in the office, uh, how to communicate up and communicate down within the organization, um, and how that can be effective or not effective and the results of that. Throughout the Leadership Academy, we have practiced and honed the skills of communication through group work, through presentations, uh, and through thoughtful responses on the message board uh, two insightful questions. So I know I personally have really appreciated being exposed to this this level of, of learning. So I'll pass it on over to Michael now. Thank you, Casey. Good afternoon, everyone, or good evening, depending on where you're calling in from. My name is Mike Bernier. I'm the Director of Operations for the Breaking the Cycle program in Maine. Uh, one, of the, uh, one of the things that I've taken away from the Leadership Academy is that, you know, we all think differently. Uh, I used to go around and label critical thinking as common sense. I've learned that common sense is different for everyone. 
and that the best, the best thing that we can do is all apply critical thinking in every scenario. In regards to innovation, we've learned that we should think big but start small. We should strive for continual innovation, not instant perfection. Look for ideas everywhere. We should share everything. We should spark with imagination, but fuel with data. We should be a platform and never fail to fail. And we did that through various projects. We've worked in teams. We've designed workplaces based on what we've learned through our innovation. So I, as we continue to learn, I'm, you know, I'm very excited being part of the Leadership Academy. So thank you very much. Tiffany. Tiffany. Hello, I'm Tiffany Carr, and I'm the clinical supervisor over at the Easter Seals New York Diagnostic and Treatment Center in Rochester, New York. Um, I'm going to talk about the willingness to stretch module and what that meant to me. Um, when we completed the willingness to stretch module, we were encouraged to examine our personal biases and really process the barriers that get in the way of us pushing ourselves to be the best that we can be and get out of um, our comfort zone. Um, what I didn't expect was that encouragement, but also being taught how to do that and to practice what that feels like in a very real and meaningful way. Um, what I also didn't expect was the opportunity to work with people across the company uh, nationwide and, and really be connected to, to people in a really strong way and build those relationships. And for me, that was a stretch point and it was very new to me. What's been amazing on this journey is examining what it means to stretch and how that relates to the company, what I'm willing to do to further company goals and my own personal brand. Um, what I appreciated was being able to overcome my fear of engaging C-level leadership and getting out of the silo of my own location, both physically and mentally, which has expanded my ideas and impact on this company. And now I'm gonna pass it on to Maria. Hello, hi. Um, I, one of my favorite modules was creation of a positive can-do culture. Um, we were introduced to the concept of instead of trying to change all culture to take, um, to do a small test of change, which was an extraordinary challenge um, for me. And I'm sorry, my name is Maria Gatewood and I'm with Enable. Um, it was a concept I didn't grasp at first and it was really struggle for me, but building, um, a culture with with focusing on one small um, change and working that and coming out and then rolling it out to your additional staff um, to me was a almost mind blowing concept and really learning to encourage your staff to provide creative solutions to challenges and embracing change. Um, for me, this was an amazing, um, really fabulous module. Um, you know, I've been in nonprofits a long time, and being in the Leadership Academy has really opened my eyes to a very different nonprofit structure and learning about the combinations and how our culture works together to fulfill one mission um, has been phenomenal for me. Um, so. I don't care how long you, you think you've known something, this Leadership Academy is a phenomenal learning experience for everyone to really hone your skills and learn your skills. You're never too old to learn. So um, it's been phenomenal. And I can't thank them enough for uh, allowing me to be a part of it. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to Stephanie. Hi, thanks, Maria. Um, good afternoon. I'm Stephanie Copeland, and I'm part of the engagement team at the FedCap Group. Um, and the Leadership Academy, you know, I had heard, oh, it's a lot of work, and, you know, it's really a lot, and you go to New York a couple of times, and you have to read and write and go in group presentations. 
And I thought, oh, that sounds really great. Um, but how, what's it going to do for me in the end, right? And I already can see how applicable and relevant every single module that we've done so far is in my day-to-day -day work and the actual work that I do um, in the role that I have. It, it's totally amazing how wonderful that is because it really helps you, um, you know, dig in and, and get excited. And I think I see that across all of my peers who are in the, in the academy as well, uh, which has also been another great experience meeting a lot of people across the footprint of the FedCap group. Um, the metrics that matter module is um, a really interesting one. And I think, you know, some people are really comfortable in that space and some others aren't. And I think that this was neat because it really gave everyone um, a, a vision of how to best understand to effectively decide what data to collect, because in reality, we all really do that every day. Um, how to analyze it, what is it telling you? And then what can you use, uh, how can you use that information that you get from the data to improve your program, your company, your role, whatever it is that you're working on. Um, it can really tell you a lot and it, this module really helps you understand how to do that. Um, and <clears throat> it also gives you a great overview of a tool that, that everybody has access to, shameless plug. Um, Metrics That Matter is an actual quarterly report that we have um, and it's on the FedCap intranet and it's a great resource and it really gives you a lot of robust data that's very interesting actually just to take a look at and understand um, you know, how much work is going on and how much is happening across the country and in overseas now. And it's, it's really an exciting document to take a look at. And I think that this module kind of drove everyone to look at that and to try to better understand it and give everyone exposure to it, which I think is really valuable. Um, and now I would like to turn it over to Amanda. Thank you. Thank you, Stephanie, and good afternoon, everyone. My name is Amanda Rickey, and I am a site supervisor of a Breaking the Cycle program in Maine. And so back in January, um, Christine McMahon presented on risk management and critical thinking in a brown bag lunch. So I've been really excited to start this module since then, um, which is risk management. We actually just started this week. And this Friday, the chair of the Community Work Services Board, Paul Davis, is our guest speaker. And he's going to speak about poor management of reputational risk, um, go over some scenarios, and identify some companies that have suffered or even failed as a result of this. And reputational risk is only one of the types of risk that we'll be covering. We'll also review other types, such as financial risks, for example. Now, this module is exciting to me because managing risks appropriately can result in great, great growth and success. And our strategy and plan at FedCap is to be innovative and to continue to grow. Growth is a part of our culture. So we're going to learn how to identify, manage, mitigate, and prioritize risks so that we can continue to achieve the goals that are set forth for our company and continue to make a difference in the lives of more and more of our program participants as we expand. A personal goal of mine is to be a part of future expansion here in Maine. And this module, along with the stretch project that you heard about, studies of combinations and acquisitions and other modules that we've completed will potentially allow me to do this. So with that, I will pass it on to Ashley. Thank you, Amanda. So I'm Ashley Welch. I'm the Program Manager of Transition and Training at MBLE. Um, I just want to say one of the things that I've loved about the Leadership Academy really is the ability to connect with and learn from my peers across the FedCap group um, that I, I might not have had the chance to do otherwise. Um, it's given me a lot of great ideas to start implementing with my team at MBLE. Um, and that'll tie in nicely with our next module, which is uh, program design and implementation. So we're actually going to be looking at this next month. And um, I, Tiffany had mentioned that all of our modules sort of roll into each other. So this really is going to be a culmination of all of our prior modules. Um, we're going to be able to apply critical thinking, ideas around innovation, a willingness to stretch both ourselves um, and existing and new staff, our risk management responsibility and metrics to create a program that's going to fit into the culture and the CUBE approach to our work. So in this module, we'll look at everything from market analysis, potential funding streams, budget management, and talent acquisition, 
all in service to providing the best possible uh, intervention to solve critical social issues. So at the end of this module, we'll be making a presentation on a program that we've come up with, um, all very specific metrics around market planning and implementation, as well as truly exercise our best critical thinking. So I'm really looking forward to this module. And with that, I will turn it over to Sarah. Thank you, Ashley, and good afternoon, everybody. I'm Sarah Caldwell, the Senior Director of Community Relations, also at MVLE. And as you've heard from a lot of um, my fellow participants uh, and the benefit of learning from our coworkers across all agencies, uh, another thing that I've really enjoyed in those group projects is the opportunity to learn from people that work in different roles uh, within the company. Um, I come from our admin team, and so it is very interesting as we approach our different projects to work with people that work more on the program side um, and learn from our different perspectives and have that opportunity for collaboration and sharing. And as we've talked about these different, all the different modules that we've learned, uh, you can hear we've learned about several technical areas between innovation, communication, metrics, and risk. And we close out the Leadership Academy by really talking about our passion. And at the heart of leadership is sharing that passion and showing others that we care and what we care about. And encouraging the heart is about the principles and practices that support our need to be appreciated for the work that we do. And in this final module, we learn how as leaders, we can apply these principles to link rewards and appreciation to the staff on our team, uh, to their performance, and why encouragement is really essential to sustaining our team members' passion and commitment to the organization and to the outcomes and all the project programs and projects that we've talked about and learned about throughout the Leadership Academy. And with that, I will turn it back over to Margaret. Thank you so much, Sarah. And um, so as you can see, this is a rather robust curriculum and, um, and very, very full bodied from the metrics to the encouraging the heart. And again, undergirded always by critical thinking. And um, so building a little bit on what Marie talked about earlier in terms of what we're, we're looking for, um, we, have, um, we have certain things that we really look at as expectations of your participation. And we're really, first of all, inviting all of you in with kind of what we call a growth mindset and always assuming that there's something to learn. And certainly, as Craig referred to, the faculty too, and you'll hear all of us say, we learn something every single time we go through the academy. And every single module, we learn something. And so bringing your, your growth mindset, bringing your assumption that you have things to learn is really, really important. Um, I will also say that we have really precise expectations around very specific participation. So we ensure that everybody completes their assignments on time, which is on Wednesdays, so that the faculty will have an opportunity to reflect and to respond um, again, as we talked about earlier, there are reading assignments, discussion groups, and then self-reflection activities as well. Our calls are every Friday morning from 9 to 10.30, and we, start, we are really precise about starting on time. And we also want to make sure, as, as I think we mentioned, our platform is Adobe, and so it's, um, it's an opportunity. We can see everybody and people raise their hands, and we do call on everyone as active participants on the call to be thinking on their feet as well as reflecting on some of the discussion board questions and comments that you may have been thinking about all week. And then we also have, and this is kind of, for me anyway, the highlight is when we all get together, which we do I think about four times a year as part of our orientation. We get together um, around the time of our solution series in March. We gather once again the evening before the, uh, the career design school graduation. And again, actually, I guess it's five times again in October for our, uh, just the prior to the solution series, and then right before our FedCap group gala. And so these wonderful gatherings at each one of them, there are, um, there are presentations that happen and we gather and we network and we really have a time to 
enjoy each other and it's everyone is and echoing everyone this this wonderful networking across the company. Um, the presentations are a huge piece of what we do and um, we really and you've heard this already but underscoring it again we were really serious about helping everyone get better and really give very direct feedback about how people can improve their presentations, how they're not going to read their PowerPoint um, slides, this kind of thing. So we want to make sure that people are comfortable on their feet, that we really have a lot of opportunity for practice. And as you heard when we talked about the willingness to stretch module, this is a time when we this is a time where we really invite vulnerability to really try and risk and do things uh, maybe for the first time in many opportunities for the first time and to make mistakes and then to learn from that and to really build the muscle uh, around leadership. And then as Laurie mentioned earlier too, we um, each of us faculty serve as a, mentor, as a mentor to each one of the participants. And that again is a very fulfilling role where we get to really learn much more about the life and times of each of the participants and to really help guide them through, through what they're doing. And ultimately, what's really important in terms of expectation is understanding that we are all responsible for each piece of the culture of the FedCap group, of all of the pieces of the FedCap group. We are all responsible for learning about growth, for understanding, managing, and mitigating risk, for bringing innovation, and for being great communicators. So that's um, much of what the expectations are as we as we go forward. So it's not, it's not something to be taken lightly at all. It's quite robust, but you come out of that, you definitely, every week, I think people leave the, leave the room, leave the Adobe room a little differently than how they came in. So Marie is gonna go through some of kind of the metrics that, because after all, metrics matter, to, um, to talk a little bit about some of the, uh, the metrics around our acceptance and, and how we are, um, put together across the organization. So Marie, back to you. Great, thanks so much, Margaret. Uh, we can scroll to the next slide, great. Um, so in terms of our rate of acceptance over the last four years, as you can see, we had 146 people apply and 52, or about a third of people, were accepted. I would suspect that we will have many more applications this year, not just because we're holding this uh, Learning Forward initiative today, um, but also in, in recent orientations where we have formally built this into our overview, that is definitely the number one question that people ask me post-orientation. So again, I suspect that this number will climb significantly this year. Um, we can scroll to the next, oh, there we go. Um, in terms of promotions, this is kind of an interesting uh, metric here, pretty remarkable that, again, over a third of people enrolled will go on to have some sort of promotion, predominantly internally, about 13 total, and we've also seen people move on externally, about five so far, so that's pretty impressive. You can go to the next slide, please. Um, in terms of our staff and Leadership Academy composition, we have a majority of people enrolled who are female, so that's a nice thing, I think. Um, in terms of race, we're not quite split in the middle. We've got about 40% non-Caucasian, 60% Caucasian, so certainly we would welcome more diversity with our application pool. We can scroll on to the next slide, please. And finally, for this section, in terms of company representation, we would definitely like to see more representation company-wide moving forward. As you can see, FedCap Inc. has had a very sizable number of candidates enrolled, as well as some other folks like Easter Seals, FedCap Group, and so on and so forth. So we strongly encourage you companies, particularly if you're not represented here yet, to send those applications along and encourage your emerging leaders to join us. Now off to you, Craig. So from a faculty perspective, since uh, I've been on the faculty since the beginning, um, I was asked to make some ob observations. And at the end of every year, when we have a summation, I have always said, first and foremost, that I have gotten more out of being on the faculty than I've actually put into it. That's not to say it's not a lot of work to be uh, part of it, 
but I can truly tell you that I have learned new skills, new experiences, and really begun to look at issues in a different way. For example, Christy McMahon's presentation on critical thinking really changed the way that I uh, approached new ideas and changed the way in which I would um, talk to staff about their new ideas. How to develop structure um, is something that was difficult for me to teach um, other members of the staff here at CWS uh, because it's a concept that really um, is difficult to, at first to grasp. And it took me probably two years of the Leadership Academy to really uh, understand how to do that um, and to understand the difference between impact and, and mere outcomes when you look at metrics. So in other words, uh, as you've often heard, we are all students throughout our lives. And the Leadership Academy um, has allowed me to continue my education, um, even though I thought coming into it, I really knew uh, a lot about what I was doing. In particular, um, I think our guest speakers have really added to my knowledge base. Um, every month at, at CWS as executive director, I have used new skills and some real practical examples that I, that I received in listening to many of our uh, guest speakers. Secondly, um, one of the unanticipated benefits of being involved um, is that it's the perfect way to really understand the family of programs throughout FedCap. Um, over these past four years, obviously FedCap has grown immensely. Um, but on the faculty, I've been able to work with managers and leaders uh, from across all of these companies uh, throughout the country and in the future across the pond. Um, so this really embodies the way in which the cube should be operating. And it's a great way to, to learn how to work within the, within the cube. It was mentioned that each participant uh, receives a mentor. Um, I've been I've been thrilled and honored uh, to serve as a mentor. Um, you get to know um, someone uh, quite, uh, in quite detail. You develop new relationships throughout the companies um, and it allows you to actually brainstorm uh, with your own uh, mentee. Um, so it, it's really been a, a labor of love, that, that part of it. But most importantly, um, for me, I think the Leadership Academy um, is not about the individual skills and the individual modules that we've, that we've talked about. I think it really results in a collective change in the way I and you approach your work. Um, I was using the example of we all learned how to ride a bike or learned how to drive by learning individual steps. But at the end of the process, you don't really think about those individual steps. You just go about the work that's involved. In sports, there's something known as uh, muscle memory. And in skiing, you develop certain skills that you don't really think about. You just do it as you look down the mountain. So in the Leadership Academy, we really learn to develop the muscle of our brain. And, that, and that's the exercise that we continue to use. And I'll turn it back to Lori. Great. Thank you, Craig, so much. And boy, do I have a lot of questions that have been um, coming in. So um, before I um, finish up, I want to get to some of these questions. Um, the first question was this. And, and Mike, I wonder if you could speak to this. If I don't get in the first time I apply, should I try again the following year or is that it? Mike? Yes, thank you, Lori. So I would say perseverance is key. Uh, the first year that I applied, I didn't get in. I applied the second year, and thankfully I got in. Uh, and, you know, here I am now speaking to everyone. So just keep applying. If you don't get in the first year, apply the second year. If you don't get in the second year, apply the third year. Just keep trying. And, you know, I would say look over your, look over your application. Make sure that, you know, there's no additional work that you need to do. Take time to digest why you didn't get in and speak to your supervisors, speak to your managers, and see if there's any way you can improve that application. Thank mm. you. Thank you, Mike. Another question. 
um, is it too much work? How do I fit it into my, um, my work day? I'm going to answer the second part of that question, and then I'm going to turn it over and ask one of the academy um, uh, class members to jump in. But um, my response to the second part, how do I fit it into my work day, is you don't. And I think that's a really important um, thing that you have to know, that this is an over and above activity. It pays great dividends, but you'll, you'll be working at home at night uh, or on weekends. There, of that, there is no doubt. Um, so just the general question, is it too much work? Who'd like to jump in and, and quickly respond to that? I will, Lori. Um, I, I really thought it was going to be, and there are times when I think that it is, but when I actually sit down and do it, it never turns out to be as much as I think it's going to be. That's a great answer. Thanks, Steph. Anyone else want to jump in on that one? Yeah, this is Casey. Um, you get out of it what you put into it. It can overwhelm you and, and be too much work on the surface, but when you actually dive in, you find that it really does help you with your day to day. So in essence, it's, it's, it's worth it. Um, as overwhelming as it may seem sometimes, like Stephanie said, it's, it's really not when you're actually doing the work itself. Great, thanks Casey. Amanda, did I see you wanted to make a response? Yes, I just wanted to add that um, I have, as I've gone through the modules, um, it seems like they have applied to exactly what's going on in that moment. Um, so for me, it's actually been really helpful to do that work because I can directly apply it even the very next day at work. So um, while it seems like it is additional to our day, it actually complements what we have going on. At least that's been my experience. That's great. So now I have another question. And I think there will be people that will love this question because they felt that way. Hey, listen, I'm not a great public speaker. How do I do this when I don't like to publicly speak? Who would like to jump in and answer that one? I'll jump in, Lori. Um, I, I hate public speaking, but each time that we've been forced to do it, I've gotten better and better. Um, so it really is an opportunity to grow. Um, and to learn. And it's a very um, safe environment in which to learn. Um, you have your fellow Leadership Academy um, who are learning right along with you. Um, so it's a great way to stretch yourself and to learn. Excellent. So um, I'm going to, I have one more question, but I'm going to give some information first and then I'm going to go back to that question because it's a great closeout question. So what's the process? For those of you that are listening to it and you're saying, um, I see myself in, in, as part of the future of the FedCap group. I see myself as a leader. Um, how do I get involved in this? What's the process? Well, the next invitation um, from Christine McMahon will go out in November. And when um, Chris sends that message out or that uh, invitation out, it will be sent, as I said, and I think it's worth repeating, to individuals who have um, a mid-level leadership role in the organization. And that can be everything from, um, you could be a supervisor, you can be a director, you can be a manager. Um, we're looking for individuals who want to um, grow their skills. Once we uh, collect all of the applications, then we have, as I mentioned, our um, faculty review process. And we have rubrics and spreadsheets and um, it's, quite, it's quite something to be a part of. And by December, the individuals will be selected and then notified by Chris um, in a great congratulatory letter. And then in January of 2020, you will all come back, to, you will come together for your very first time in New York, um, where we will have a complete and day-long orientation. Different members of the organization will stop in and say hello. Our board chair, um, Mark O'Donohue, often stops in to say hello. And I need to just put this plug out because I think it's really important. Will Edward, Edwards and the culinary team provide for the Leadership Academy, see how people are nodding their heads, some of the best food you've ever experienced in your entire life. Um, and so that's actually just a benefit, I think, of being a part of the Academy. So, so the last question um, that was posed is, is this. I, I'm not sure um, 
if I see myself as a leader, but I want to see myself as a leader, should I apply? Interesting question. Who would like to take a, a stab at that, members of our class? Lori, this, this is uh, Sarah. I, I'll say something on, on that because it kind of touches on one of the earlier questions and something else that I feel like I've, I've gained as a part of this Leadership Academy. At the orientation, uh, we each present on our, what we view as our leadership style and our leadership brand. And then in a later module, we talk about that a little bit more and further refine our our leadership style and it really I think helps to is exercise that helps to build your confidence as a leader and even small tweaks that we've done around the words that we use um, you know I, I want to be this or I want my colleagues to view this versus confidently saying I am this and I think that participating in the Leadership Academy really helps to build your confidence to be able to say, I am a leader, I am passionate, I am a connector, you know, whatever your leadership style is. Great, Sarah, thanks so much. Anyone else, one other person? I, I think that um, if you feel at all that you'd like to know anything more about yourself as a leader or develop yourself, as a leader, Leadership Academy is a great place to um, go into that that uh, testing ground and, and figure it out. Because um, even though you may go in feeling like you're weak in certain areas, you're actually ahead of the game knowing that and knowing that you have to develop those. And Leadership Academy has a way of drawing out um, those things that you need to work on, but also strengthening and, and helping you to realize what you already have. Um, so just like when you go into the gym, you don't know what muscles you're going to be using sometimes. And Leadership Academy is just the same way. You end up coming out with so much more muscle and so much more strength and confidence and um, skill at what you're doing. Mm, that's great, Tiffany. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Um, okay. So at this juncture, I don't um, ha see any more. I'm not able to see the chat room. So I've been being fed questions and that's great. If there's any more questions in the chat room that I might have missed, someone will let me know. But if not, I think that ends our presentation for the day. We want to thank you all so much for joining with us. We have um, probably in the range of 240, 250 people on the call today. And, um, and that is a statement, I believe, of the fact that we have a culture, an emerging culture, of one that wants to learn. And that's why the Leadership um, Academy and the Brown Bag Lunch are, and our Fed Talks are part of what we call learning forward, our real effort to ensure that every single one of us evolves in our professional development. So if you have any more questions about the Leadership Academy, any um, any maybe just musings or wonderings, you can talk to any member of the current class. You can talk to the faculty members that are on the call and you certainly can email um, me, Lori Lutz, and I will um, I'll answer your questions. So with that, I think we're going to end for the day. And again, thank you so much for your participation in our brown bag lunches. <laughs>